All right, we're here for the second round, second league tonight. Just getting the league here. <clears throat> like I didn't, I didn't go O2 and then farm up the bottom, you know, which is is all I can control. Yeah, I've got the dates here. Hang on. I started this on 624, so a week ago. A week ago today. And I'll probably either finish it today or tomorrow. So I basically played 100 matches in a week because I thought I was going to play in the mocks on Friday. So I just wanted to make sure. And I was like, I might as well just like test my thing. And I kept, I kept track of my rating at the end of each day. So like that might matter. I don't know. Like, and that can kind of give some kind of, um, some kind of, I guess, interpretation of who I'm beating. It's it's difficult. It's less often though. You know, not like they try to do it based on records. Like most of the time when I stream, if MTG bot's working, I can see that I'm playing against someone of a similar record. Uh, keep this. I'm actually going to hold my Street Wraith until next turn. Leagues aren't necessarily random. Like Leagues are closer to similar records. <clears throat> they don't try. They don't just pair like a 4-0 against an 0-4. They try not to at least. I'm going to... What do I want to do? I have to think. Uh, I'm just going to Steer Visions, and then I'll probably just bobble on my opponent's turn. No, that was stupid. I should have bobbled them now. We're going to put both of these on the bottom because we're in the markets for lands. I should have bobbled before I Serum Visioned in order to know what I was looking for. I just, I just got talking and missed that. They play – most of the time leagues are close. Like when MTG bot's working, most of the time you're paired against someone uh, – whoa – of equal – um, of equal, God, I can't even speak. I'm just tired. Of equal record. That's like, and that's when MTG bot is there. Kind of, it kind of confirms that. And so now we're looking for a land. We didn't find a land, so we're just putting these on the bottom. I could be sequencing this horrible. I'm trying to interact, so I could be missing out on things. All right, nice. Um, I don't really want to kill this thing. At least I would rather play a creature. Win MTG by working, yes. All right, so what are the odds my opponents get something like uh, whatever that dumb card is, Blossoming Defense? It seems like a deck that could easily have Blossoming Defense, but we're going to find out. Okay, they don't have it. Look at my card here. It's a Scalding Tarn. So because it's a Scalding Tarn, I'm doing this terribly out of sequencing here. If it wasn't a Scalding Tarn, I think I would have played Angler. But because it's a Scalding Tarn and it's going to grow both my shadows, I'm going to play the um, I'm going to play Death Shadow. You can like MTG Bot usually when MTG Bot's working, it tells you um, what what you're playing against, like what the, your opponent's record is. Like, whatever, Dylan Hovey has been paired against, um, oh, they just scooped it up. My opponent's name is Mr. Timmy, that's kind of cool. So Dylan Hovey is paired against this person at, whatever, X and X. Okay, so against the creature deck, we're going to assume they're just, like, a weird green-white beatdown deck. I kind of want all these. I often like siding out some cards. I like siding out Faithless Looting as well when my after sideboard when my because I I still have uh, six cantrips when my deck becomes more um, honed and more uh, um, whatever it is 
when it becomes more uh, streamlined, I like losing cutting faithless looting because the cost after sideboard of going down a card is higher. <clears throat> I'm going to bring in one more street race. Just keep this in, because I am going higher up on my curve a little bit. So I, I do want to make sure the cards keep flowing. Even though the, the way this version has worked out, I have not really had a problem, like, most of the time. Like, I hit land drops well, just because you've got so many. You've got 3, 9, 11, 15 cantrips, and 7 of them are free. You have less than you want to discard, if it makes sense. <clears throat> yeah, because going down a card hurts. Once, Because, like, most of the time, these Death Shadow decks... Uh, I'm going to keep this. Most of the time, these Death Shadow decks... I probably should have boarded out some discard. I just didn't think about that. Most of the time, all these Death Shadow decks have... That's gas. I think I'm just going to get the Lava Man in play. Which means... We're going to bobble ourselves. I think it's just better than kill. I'm going to be able to deal with this eventually. We have a Street Wraith. Yeah, I'm just going to keep Street Wraith because it's just going to keep my graveyard stocked. Um, Because most of the time in Game 1s, whenever you play against Shadow Decks, whenever you play Shadow Decks, you have dead cards that don't do anything. No, I'm running four kind of graveyard filler cards between Faithless Looting and um, between Faithless Looting and Thought Scout. But I just I wanted to play with Serum Visions. I played Freedman's List with six, and it felt like um, my Snapcasters sucked. Yeah, we're just gonna like I'm I'm again. This might not be great sequencing, but I'm just doing this because I'm I'm interacting as well. We're just going to, like, Wrath is bored. Pass the turn. Didn't even cycle my Street Wraith when I kept it, so it just, it just doesn't really matter. <clears throat> huh. We didn't quite figure this out. We didn't do this right. End up cutting a snap for a 13 VR. I think when you have Bobbles, yeah, they just scoop it out. I think when you have Bobbles in your deck, it is actually correct to play um, three Snapcaster Mages. Because your Snapcaster Mages just, when you bobble um, and Faithless Looting, your Snapcaster Mages just aren't as good as you would expect them to be. Um, and you, sh you, shouldn't, you shouldn't get like hooked up on them. Um, Yeah, I just need six more matches to get to 100. <coughs> I also wanted like I was been cutting an island for an 11th fetch. Yeah, I've totally flirted with doing that many times. SS Nielsen, this guy's been playing Death Shadow, Jun Death Shadow recently. So we're gonna we're gonna go off that and uh, not gonna mulligan. This hand's not great. What do I want to do? Um. Which is Fletch Buff Crypt. I'm likely going to want looting at some point. Yeah, this guy's this guy had a 5-0 list posted of a, of a traverse shadow deck. Yeah, and here we go. So we're likely to hit our third land. So I kind of want to take my opponent's Inquisition of Kozilek. So that then I can Snapcaster Mage their Inquisition, their Snapcaster Mage. Then push their Tarmogoyf, or Snap Push, because they have one, two, three, four. They're going to have Delirium on one. <coughs> Jeez. But they're going to probably be looking for a land. I think I'm going to take this Inquisition. Yeah. We're just going to take that. We're going to take their turn one play that interacts with us. But when you like how many field ones. Yeah. But I mean, like, I, I liked playing, like, targeting their cells. They cycle. Okay. 
So that means that that's probably another land. That's a lander discard spell. Oh, it's a street wave. Okay. So one, two, three, four, five. This is gone. So I know four out of the six. There's five. Okay, so this makes me think that they drew either, they must have drawn Stubborn Denial or a land. <coughs> That's pretty good. So let's cycle this. Thoughtseize is pretty good too. I think um, it's good to get, uh, to get nasty going though. The problem is this is the cost of getting of Faithless Looting. We're going down a card. So we're kind of hoping these two cards suck because our hand's very good. And unfortunately, they didn't. But we can ditch this Death Shadow, and I think we ditch Fatal Push. There's an argument there for ditching Snapcaster Mage. That's the downside of Faithless Looting. Yes, I can pitch a snap, but I think that snapping back either of the two cards in my hand is going to make up for going down a land. Yes, they hit the land. I like Shadow Blade Snap. Well, now we're in trouble. So they just took Snapcaster Mage. And they got the Dismember 2. Jeez. Now this game is going to get tough. Um, let's go like this. <coughs> That's a lot of Tarmogoyfs. I just gotta take, I would like to be able to take the Snapcaster Mage, but I think I've gotta take Tarmogoyf. And if they, like, Snap Thought sees me, then at least I can push the Snapcaster Mage, and their Snapcaster trades one form with my push. But yeah, this is tough. I could take the Traverse, but, like, that just turns into a Death Shadow. So basically, these are all... They had three pushable cards in a Snapcaster Mage. What do I want to do with this land? i probably go get... Watery Grave now. All right, that's pretty good. I don't want either of these. I have two lower cards in order to have this. This be good. Okay. Okay, so here's our Death Shadow. So Snapcaster Mage and two more cards in their hand. That scar is not bad. <coughs> Swamp's pretty bad. Leave it in our hand. We're in trouble now. Yes. This means I have to chump block the death shadow, which is bad. The fact they had an answer for my first shadow is what beat me up pretty hard here. So I got a couple outs. I can draw Snapcaster Mage. Snapcaster Mage would be pretty good right now. What is that? That's just like such poor sequencing. I mean, I guess it doesn't matter because like I'm dead. Yeah. But they should they should have theoretically I guess it didn't matter there. They should they should have done that on my upkeep to do it super right. Yeah, the first angler is what was bad. Them killing the them getting nasty first was was rough for the home team. Okay, so I like Spell Bomb, Last Hope, and Colagon's Command. Uh, we don't want Battle Rage. I'm going to shave on a couple Street Wraiths and shave a couple Stubborn Denials. Though one could argue that Stubborn Denial is better than Lightning Bolt. And I can probably keep another Street Wraith. Because we, we definitely don't want to be able to, like... One of the awkward things about playing Death Shadow is that if your opponent can get their Shadow under... or lower... get to a lower life total than you, then you're kind of, like, off the 8-ball. 
Spell Bomb's kind of just a cantrip that can harass Traverse the Ubenwald. <clears throat> right to crack it on their turn. Yes, okay, Russell Wilson, you're right. And I guess you're afraid of discard, right? You're afraid of dis... Like, the only way that gets punished is because of discard. And if I draw a discard spell, they're, I, they win anyways. So it doesn't matter. I've actually liked Stubborn Denial in these mirrors a little bit because of Liliana the Veil. Like, my opponent could... If my opponent has Liliana the Veils and, like, that card gets there, then I'm going to lose. That's another thing I don't know. Am I supposed to board EEs in, in this mirror? I don't know. Because, like, I never played Grixis Shadow when Jun Shadow was big. EE is better than stuff. All right, we'll take your word for it. We'll take y'all's word for it. Not having four fatal pushes, you know, like, like these decks used to make these mirrors a little awkward. Because my opponent likely has a lot of fatal pushes because they don't have red. At least we didn't see red. They could just be a bug shadow deck. Though they likely have TBR. I would be very surprised if they didn't have Battle Rage. Alright, this hand's okay. I don't think I think it's pretty poor to mulligan. At least our looting's probably gonna be decent this game. I haven't really noticed the difference with my switch that I made. My opponent has a looting of their own. I think I'm just going to take their Tarmoloif. <clears throat> yeah. Because Goy comes down on two, and that can be a little annoying. I could take their Fatal Push, but it doesn't look like our Death Shadow is going to be large enough to hang. With their Tarmogoy for her. Like, they're probably going to Death Shadow better than we are. And I don't have any removal yet, so we're just going to get rid of this Goyf. <coughs> EE is slow, which is the, the issue. So that's what they drew, I think. Yeah. So they're checking. They targeted themselves. So they like their top card. Whatever it is. Okay. I wonder if it's okay for me to offer this faithless looting up to get stubbed. My hand's not bad, and I don't necessarily hate, like, I don't really care about discarding many other cards. And then if my opponent does stub it, they have Delirium, we can counter, or we can deal with a uh, Traverse. We can shut that off. Yeah, I think I'm okay. If they want to stub this looting, I think I'm alright with it. Okay. Yes. The problem is I hit two good cards. <coughs> I think we're going to get rid of the EE and probably a land. This game looks like it's going to go on for a while. So we're going to get rid of this land. Well, then my shadows aren't getting in there. God, this is a tough discard. So I can go to 13. I can just get rid of my spell bomb. Like, I'm probably just, I'm probably just going to get rid of both artifacts, I think. I think that's what we're doing. And then we're just going to pass. We're not going to play into this Stubborn Denial. Like I'm going to go, next turn I'm going to go Thoughtseize, the Fatal Push, Shadow, Shadow. Burning Catacombs. Okay, so they played Polluted Delta also. Okay, so they do have red in their deck. Oh, I knew that. They had the Faithless Looting. Gosh, I'm crazy. Yes. <clears throat> oh, I'm losing my mind. All 
That's pretty good too. Oh, so they drew they draw pretty poorly, though their looting is gonna be gas next turn. So let's just take their push. And now we're just gonna get into like really gross death shadow math. The problem is they loot away their lands, their shadow's small forever. Not forever, but like their shadow could be like they need to keep some kind of lands in order to keep up. Because like I could just kill them. But now I gotta start to do that gross death shadow mirror math. So they have ley line of the void, so that's good to know. So we're probably gonna ditch like a Gurmag Angler after sideboarding. So they bobble targeting themselves. They like their top card. So the last card is stubborn denial. And stub's gonna be online. So what could I hit that's really good here? I'm going to start with the Thought Scaler. Yep, that makes sense. So let's start with this. Though, so maybe I want to wait until I can actually do something with this. I probably do. I probably just want to wait until... Because I, I want this to resolve. I actively want this thing to resolve. So let's just play out a shadow, hold our thought sees, and then pass. This game's gonna get weird. This game's gonna get weird fast. Fetching their upkeep, that's good mechanics, good play by our opponents. Okay. I guess that's that's the issue of not casting it. Traverse. So they're gonna traverse for a death shadow or a snapcaster mage. Probably snapcaster mage. If I were them, I would traverse for snap because that lets you keep up water or stubborn denial. Okay, so they just play another death shadow. <clears throat> they gotta keep up in the arms race. So they can't attack, yeah. I kind of want to flashback Faithless Looting while my opponent's tapped out, but that's not going to get me anywhere. I could just play my fetch land and pass. This game's going to get so weird. Yeah, I'm just going to play a fetch land and pass. So they have a stub. So they have our first thing covered. So I guess I could have attacked. This is going to be so annoying. The nice thing is that we're at a point in the game where faithless looting might be threatened. And my opponent might just want to counter it. That could give us a window to get a shadow off the board. That's, if they attack, I have to worry about dismember. Because, okay, oh god. So this means they drew Battle Rage or dismember. So, they definitely have a Battle Rage or a Fatal Push or a dismember. So, if I go block, block, if I double block this, block here... My opponent dismembers one of the creatures I double block. They go to nine. These are nines. My shadows grow. I, th I can just double block and... If I double block here, they kill one of them. I actually have to fetch shock in order to not lose a bunch of my... Well, no, because the creatures grow. So if I double block here... Double block, he block here. I think my best black is here and here and then pass priority. <clears throat> and my shadows are going to become at least sixes. And I'm like I, I'm going to deal two damage to this and kill one of theirs. And then I can respond. 
I feel like they've got Battle Rage or Dismember. Dismember makes the most sense. And if they have Fatal Push, then our Shadows just... I trade off the board. No, I don't, because one of my Shadows lives because of state-based effects. So I think my best block is one and then double block. And then... I pass priority because I don't want them, I don't want to fetch shock and then die to a dismember. I basically can't beat dismember, I don't think, anyways. Yeah, I don't think I can beat dismember, which I think their play shows dismember. <laughs> huh. So now do I move? Do I just accept this? They're passing back. I think I just let this happen. I don't lose anything. They lose a death shadow, right? Yeah, we just do nothing. Yeah, this turned out to be like a pretty awful attack. My opponent, and then like they die on the crack back here. Like I don't lose any of my creatures. My shadows become sixes. This is the problem with death shadow mirrors in combat. You just never should be the first one to attack. Okay, so <coughs> so I have a steam vents left in my deck. Let me just make sure I have a steam vents. I have a steam vents. Okay, so now I just go fetch shock. I just attack and can fetch shock to nine, and then they can't win. Unless they have snapcaster. Snapcaster push doesn't do anything. So let me just make sure I have steam vents left in my deck. Steam vents. Because now we beat Snapcaster Mage also. Yeah. Yeah, so we had Dismember. So, I think our... My opponent just died no matter what, which is the annoying part of that. They, they should have just Dismembered. But... Um, I'm going to board out an Angler because they have Ley Lines. And I think I'm going to board in one Stubborn Denial. Just because I don't want to get Ley Lined with Anglers. Let me get some more water. I'll be right back. Yes. You should never be the first one to attack in Death Shadow Mirrors. Well, it sucks to mulligan. I think we I don't think we can keep this one. Alright, this hand's pretty good. Um I'm gonna put that on top. Well, actually, they're so likely to have a discard spell, they're going to take my Snapcaster Mage. So I think I'm actually gonna put this land on the bottom. They have Leyline. Okay. The ley line's tough. So they have a stubborn denial, is what you're telling me. So we'll pass. We're not going to play into the denial. <clears throat> this is going to be tough to win. Without a card like Lilian of the Veil, there's like, and without the, our Snapcaster Mages and Gurmag Anglers online, it's going to be tough to beat this. So we're basically going to have to win with just. I saw that. I should keep. I should have kept my fourth. I should have kept my. Uh, I think I should have kept my street wraiths in play, because um, because I saw Layla in the morning. I should have done that for sure. 
He's not bad. So let's just go get this watery grave. I probably shouldn't be fetch shocking as aggressively as I am. Okay, so this is a pretty straightforward take the traverse. Because their land gives them delirium. Yeah, they should have definitely fired this traverse off last turn, I think. I'm not going to play into the stubborn denial, but. He's nice. Because I don't. So, something that I always do that is probably like likely wrong is I find myself getting in trouble when I hold on to my fetch lands and like I, I, I like I like doing things you can do at instant speed at my main phase so that's something that I like doing which isn't always super correct okay so that shadow's good I do think I'm gonna shock myself but that's probably the last time we're gonna do that. And then I'm gonna flash we're gonna flash in the old beater at the end of their turn. Like I think people get themselves in trouble by being too cute with their fetch lands too often. Or just too cute with playing at um, instant speed when they couldn't just they should just play at sorcery speed. I'm cool with this. If this snapcaster mage eats his dismember, then like sign me up. All right, so that gets stubbed, so we, we got to hold on to that, but that is a good thing to have. Now, I think we have three cards. I might just run this explosives out. No. I treat this deck like I say, I crack my fish loose when I actually need the mana. Yeah, I think that gets people in trouble a decent amount of the time. I think that, then like, as long as you're awake and you're playing well, then you can mitigate that. So now I'm just going to run this Death Shadow out there. Um, but I definitely think that gets people in trouble. From time to time. And I, I like just eliminating. Yes, make serum crap. Yep, I would agree with that statement. So we're just like a fetch land away from potentially winning this game, which would be these. All right, well, now we're in trouble. My opponent has stubborn denial X in their hand. So I could actually. Play the Liliana. My opponent stubs. I can then fetch shock, dismember their shat attack, and then dismember their shadow. I get wrecked if they have fatal push or if they have double stub. What else could they have in their hand? Their hand's got to be like lands or more removal spells. Yes. Well, no, I can't play fetch and attack. I have to get this stubborn denial out of their hand. What I'm wondering is if Liliana the Last Hope is worth that or not. Like, I'm thinking, because, like, I just lose the game on the spot. They have a second stubborn denial, or if they have another fatal push. The game's basically just over, because they just kill me. Because they deal with my death shadow. Yes. Like, I'm, t I'm talking about if they have a way to, like, if they have another removal spell. No, no, I understand what you're saying. Like, what if they have fatal, like, I'm just talking this through. Like, if they have fatal push, they likely would have used it. So I'm just trying to, like, decipher what they have. I need to get this Liliana. The Stubborn Denial counters Dismember, but my Death Shadow still eats their Death Shadow. They could have Street Wraith. Street Wraith is a pretty good one for them to have. So what if they have Street Wraith? They could have Street Wraith. I think Street Wraith is a very legitimate card for them to have. 
And if they have Street Wraith and my Dismember doesn't resolve, I'm dead. So why don't I start with this Liliana? Let me make sure I have lands in my graveyard. Yes. Street Wraith is a very legitimate card they could have, I think. Well, they might. Okay. I don't know why they did that, but... So, second Stubborn Denial. We beat second Stubborn Denial because Fetch Shock, we take seven. We go to four. Our shadow is bigger. We don't beat... If they go Street Wraith and the removal spell, we're in trouble. If they play Street Wraith, we're still good. So I think we're just attacking. They're bad or have another. I do think it's not correct for them to deal with that. I have a shock land. Watery Grave. We're just dead if they have a removal spell. But it doesn't make sense for them to have a removal spell. All right. So the last card must just be a dud. It's got to be like a land. Karma Wave. We got that covered. Okay, so blue, red. So they had a second stubborn enough. Okay, so they had they had denial number two, which didn't matter if they countered it because my death shadow was still larger than their target was. So that makes sense. I know this was stupid. I, I clicked through and didn't see her envisions first. So if I see her envisions into exactly fatal push, I'm gonna be sad. I'm gonna feel pretty stupid if this is a fatal push. It's not. Um, put on the bottom, put on top. The card, the card they drew, they drew into stub. Didn't they, I, did they have the mana to, um, did they have the mana to play Goyf on a previous turn? I don't exactly remember, Grant. All right. Keep rattling them off. That is match 95 in the books. That's another thing that I really dislike about sideboarding in cards like Leyline of the Void is that like while serum visions can let you get away with uh, with some of those cards or it's not serum vision faithless looting I just really dislike that effect in a fair game let me just make sure my spreadsheet is All of them. Okay. I think that was just a mistake. I do like looting. Dismember makes both jump though. Probably should have probably should have kept the scar on top because Dismember did not kill Goyf or Shadow. Yeah, I didn't think about that, Teddy. That would have made sense. Like, Dismember is at least... Dismember probably lets me win all the Shadow Fights. Um, through 95 matches, I'm right at 66.32. Two out of... Basically, two out of every three. Yeah, I would say... I, I just don't think that Liliana does... I don't think you can afford to do that. Okay, so we have two. We drew two of our lootings, which is actually kind of nice because we can just ditch one. 
Um, I'll keep my hand. I, I love thought seizing. I love discard spelling my opponent after they mulligan. Actually, my wife's about to go to bed. I'm going to go say hi to her. I'll be right back. Isn't this the Ponza dude? I'm not sure, to tell you the truth. If it is, that's kind of funny. I'm going to hold this Street Wraith for one more turn because I'm Inquisition no matter what. And if I find a Serum Visions, it makes my Street Wraith better. That could be a series of matches that are particularly favored or unfavored. Uh, okay, what do they do with this? They put a card on top. So they put land three on top for sure. So we're going to have to find some discard spells. Some thought is pretty quick. But it's also skewed. Well, if every deck wins, every deck can't win at 66.3%, right? Because for each win, there has to be a loss. Oh, that's gas. So now I can... This hits... Yeah, I think I'm still going to go like this. Even though this, like, cuts me off Storm Breath Dragon. Like, I could save that, but I, wanna, I wanted to looting as well. I probably should, one, two, I probably should cycle, because if I hit Death Shadow, it's pretty good. I have the first Blood Bright Elf covered. <coughs> This is kind of this is kind of flirting with with like some bad stuff at the moment. Okay, so there's Shadow. So let's get rid of this first Faithless Looting, and let's get rid of Inquisition of Copilot. That was probably a little greedy of me to go that to be that liberal with my life total. Yeah, because like if you look it like if you think of all of Magic in general. The win percentage is 50%, right? Because for every single win, there has to be a lost gas. It's a little skewed on Moto because you get a little, you get more odd sets of data, I guess. But I think you have to correlate it. Okay, so hit Stone Rain. All right, so that's kind of annoying. Better, better. Uh, what do they call it? The kids call it better lucky than good. So we're gonna bolt my opponent's face here, so both creatures are lethal. Yes, that makes sense. Yep. You're right there, sir. There is always a winner or a loser on Moto. Um, how did I side? I, I think I liked the way that I sideboarded against this deck. I think I just like bringing these in and then cutting all of these. I think I'm a fan. I'm a fan of that strategy. <clears throat> but I think that this deck is, I think this deck is very good. I think what holds it back is that it is very difficult to play. And um, that just deter. And then, like, there was a time that when humans came out, humans was just a better Death Shadow deck. Like, uh, we're going to keep this. Humans was a better Death Shadow deck for a while. It did the same thing. It was an aggressive deck that was disruptive. 
And so you had a lot of people that moved off of Death Shadow and moved over to humans. And people also learned how to play against Death Shadow. You didn't, like, nobody just chip shots me anymore. There were people that used to, you could get chip shotted into wins. Okay, so we're just not playing around Blood Moon. We have a Stubborn Denial. We're going to get um, the old Shadow Dad into play as soon as possible. But I think, I, I hear, I get a lot of, like, this deck isn't good. And I, I think it, I think it's very good still. I just wanted to do something here to kind of work with that. And then it also clears up some of my ideas. Like, how good is the deck, actually? Like, I thought I had a decent Jun matchup. I don't have a good Jun matchup at all. That's one of the worst matchups that I've got here. Um, you know, just things like that to find, like, the, the truths of things. Um, I probably don't want this second dismember. I probably will want the third land at some point. Yeah, well... No, we don't even have Snapcaster in our deck, so whatever. We're going to put this on the bottom. <coughs> I have a positive deck. I have a positive matchup against... Um, in my testing here, it's only been like eight games, but I'm ahead of the curve against Mardu, and I'm ahead of the curve against Blue White Red. I'm behind the curve against um, I'm behind the curve against Blue White. All right, that's good. So, what am I doing? I could get greedy. I could just play two shadows and not stub anything. And then if my opponent plays Blood Moon, I can still just dismember this and crack them for 42 points of damage. a lot, but I'm going to try the list that, uh, no, I'm not. I'm going to try the list that BMJ, oh, did I, if you're still watching my stream, did I tweak out there for a second? Okay, that's good. So let's, Inferno Titan, Corso, Crufix. So I think I'm just going to take their bird. We could just get like super greedy here, and I think we're going to. We're just going to dismember this, play another Death Shadow, and then just like abyss them for the rest of the game. I go to four. I guess taking four points leaves me dead to bolt, so there's just no reason to do that. So let's. I shouldn't have. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm sequencing a little poorly. You're gone for a minute, just for a minute? Okay. We're back. I had a little tweak out. My OBS said it tweaked out, but. All right, there we go. And I don't, and I guess there's like the big issue with like my data. Like I, you could say that tonight I'm playing against bad day. You know, but are there bad decks in modern? Are there are there like decks that are in the middle of the pack? And then are there decks that like, because like it seems like every deck in modern is kind of fine, right? Like, um, as long as your deck can be linear, I think, then your deck's playable. If your deck's not linear in some way, I don't think that it can routinely win games in a modern format. 
on average. I will, yeah, I, I want to write about it first, and I want to sum my ideas out because I don't want to, I don't want to like put it into the group and then have a four million Facebook things. But like, aren't all modern decks like kind of decent? And then there's like humans, hollow one, middle of the pack. Like, the bottom third of modern that's just disgusting. Because, like, so many bad... Like, I think blue-white control is really bad. But four of them were in the Grand Prix. Top eight. I think that whatever it is is really bad. Um, pawns. I think Pawns is really bad. One and open. Like, I'm sure some people think Death Shadow is really bad. It just top four the last two Grand Prix. Like, it seems like there's like this just, like as long as your deck is like aggressive and does inherently powerful things, I think it's like fine. And then there's like humans in Hollow One. In my opinion. I would like to play first. Um, I'm going to keep this hand, and I think I'm going to lead off on Blood Crypt. I like, I like going discard spell into Faith of Sluting with hands like this. Especially considering there's like these are easy ditches, and I think that these cards here are going to help my game plan more than these cards. I consider Jeskai Control bad. I, I think I think that I think that in the long run, if your deck is not like aggressive, have the ability to kill on turn four, then I just I just don't think your deck's that good. There are players that are fantastic, that can still win with those decks. Benjamin Nikolic is, like, an absolutely fantastic Magic player. I've played against Ben a few times, like... Okay. So we're playing against a Sahili deck. This is this is probably a bad matchup for me. I think that a deck that cannot put its head down and ignore its opponent when it needs to is not good. Because you're not getting your free wins. Cryptic Command is slow. That's the problem with Cryptic Command. In my opinion. So, like, depending on our opponent's build, these Stubborn Denials are either awful or amazing. Because if they have, like, Eldritch Evolution, I really want these. But I don't think I have time to, like, hang around with these right now. So we're going to Looting. We're going to look to find a land. And then try to get rid of... Oh, gross. And this is just, like, the worst case scenario. We're likely going to need the Battle Rage. We're going to get rid of this. Give me a little one of fling to get people. Um, I think your Battle Rage is your get people card, right? I think a deck that is slow is not... Oh, they hit a land off the Clothing Oracle. Nice. Yeah, we're just like... And now I'm like floundering here. I'm just going to take their Felidar Guardian. Probably have a voice too. This is just gross all around. So am I going to beat... Probably just take the voice... The Felidar Guardian is going to blink the Coiling Oracle, but like I think that's we just got to hope that we can overpower that in a small ball. Why do we not get Watery Grave? Because we wanted to cast Faithless Looting. I believe that that kind of strategy is bad in modern. I think that good players can play those decks and do well, but I think... On average, if your deck does not produce free wins and cannot punish your opponent for missing, like turn fouring people, then it's just not overall successful. That's what my feeling is. Like, you know, that's just my opinion. Yeah, Team of Battle Rage is your gotcha card. So this blinks. Coiling Oracle. 
Okay, say so burden hand. Jeez. One, two, three, four, five, six. All right, we're going to die. If they have Sahili, we're going to die. That's okay. Okay, Guardian blinks Coiling Oracle. He could have blinked his Guardian and then blinked his Coiling Oracle. So, like, if we draw Death Shadow, we can win this game. Because my opponent's not doing anything. No, the, the bird was on top, right? Because this, this stays on top. Yeah, so we actually don't know their last card. All right. So we got a plan. And this is something, like, that I think is, like, yes. It is in his hand. I just didn't take enough time to read it. Where's the battlefield? Where's that card? It's my card. It's the battlefield. Otherwise, put a card in your hand. Okay. All right. All right. I just did not read well enough. You show me a you show me somebody that puts up constant results with control decks in modern outside of Benjamin Nikolic, and I'll look at that. I'll, I'll look into it, Drago. And Ben Ben is a fantastic Magic player. I've, I've played against Ben a few times. Like Ben is great. Hopefully my opponent attacks me. I mean I'm going to dismember something here, regardless. I think. Because like they're just gonna be able to chump my angler for days, which is gonna eventually let them draw out of it. Like we're just gonna try to end this game as quick as possible. Okay, Gabriel Nassif is a Hall of Famer. I think the average player cannot win with control decks because they do not provide free wins. They don't punish people that stumble. And that's just, that's my opinion. I think that there's ways that you can build your control decks to be good. Like, I think Blue Moon's a, I think Blue Moon's a good control deck. I think Blood Moon's a powerful card. Um, I think, I think if you want to build, like, if somebody told me if, like, I think Blue Moon's a good control deck. That's what I think. I think that's your control deck that you should play. If you would like to play control. Okay, so can they trade my shadow? Alright, that's good for the home team. And like here, like we are doing something inherently powerful here. We missed our first land. Like, yes, my opponent dirtled out, but they still enacted their game plan and we're still going to win. More than likely. Because our deck is powerful enough to make up for the shortcomings of our draw. Like they bounced, like they did their thing, and it's just not gonna matter. Like I would assume this is this deck's thing. Like it's it's a it's like a blink value kind of deck. I don't know. I think Blood Moon's that good. That's my opinion. I think I think Blood Moon's that good of a card in the format. The Blood Moon produces free wins. Uh, what are we even playing against? We're playing against like a creature deck. So I'm just going to board the same way I do against humans. Um, uh, going to cut some Street Wraiths. Going to cut some Anglers. Going to cut... Stubborn Denial seems kind of medium. <clears throat> Especially after bringing in ways to deal with this thing. So I think I'm going to cut Stub. If I see like Eldritch Evolution, I'm gonna bring it back, but I think it's just better to control the board. I have like ways to hit Sahili to disrupt the combo, ways to deal with the combo. So I think I think we're gonna cut our counter spells and just be mono removal and then battle rage death shadow.
No, so I think that the decks are inherently not very powerful. How's, uh, like, Lava Man hits, Lava Man hits, like, every creature we saw there, right? Except Felidar Guardian. And it also shoots Sahili to break up the combo. Drawing two of them is pretty bad, though. I've actually got a lower in this hand. Because I can't, I don't have a way to cantrip out of it, and I have two three drops. <clears throat> I just need things that kill things, right? Yeah, this is what we're going to do here. Uh, I'll put this on the bottom. My, I think that the decks are just... Like, I think the decks are just inherently not very strong because you can't punish somebody. You can't, like... You can't do something like turn three Karn. You can't do something like turn three Battle Rage of Shadow kill you or, like, lock you out of a game. Reflector Mage, that's annoying. Um, I'm just going to see your visions. <coughs> also, like, what I hate about the control decks, and like what I play, what I like playing about with Legacy, uh, so we want this land. Um, Probably want the abrade too, so let's put this on top. Put this on top. Play our bobble. I should have. I, I keep. I, that was stupid. I should have bobbled on my main phase in order to um, think about what my opponent was drawing because it might inform my decision. Like, what I think control decks suffer with is that they can't make up, like, besides Jace, like, control decks have the ultimate wrong half of their deck problem, where you can you can draw this opening hand up, being, I should have, again, I'm just sequencing this poorly because I'm talking also. Um, we just want both of these. We just want to grind. Um, this is going to get Reflective Mage. We're going to get Cracked for two. Um, you can't make up, like, you can have this hand of your blue white player, and you're like, I've got Snapcaster Mage, I've got Lightning Bolt, Lightning Helix, Path, three lands. And that hand is literally unplayable against half the format, and there's nothing you can do to fix it until you're already dead. Like, sometimes I play Death Shadow, and I draw all my discard spells against a creature deck, and I just kill them with a 10-10. With a or, like, you just draw enough Thalia's Lieutenants to where your cards get bigger, you just burn and query somebody out of a game. <clears throat> Um, I think I'm just going to go up bang bang here. It gets a clunky three drop out of my hand and I don't really want to, like, I could have braid something that's not being mana efficient. Um, not having double red kind of hurts, but I think I just want to shoot this, go up and then look to deal with this next turn. I just need to like start, I just need to trade. Hey, Brendozer, thank you very much for the sub. I appreciate it. Boom trying to get shadow packing movie and bottles to increase like a hood of the turn two threat. Do you think that it might be correct to play more than four delve creatures? I think you could if you wanted to. Again, I'm like I'm like I'm, I'm probably gonna get dumped in this game because I'm mulligan and I'm not super paying attention here. They have Magus the Moon in their decks. So they definitely have Eldritch Evolution. Yeah, I'm just, I'm like super dead. I have to pay attention here. I need a list. Do you want me to take Grim Lava Mancer was great? Yes. I want to board in, so I want to change my sideboard here. Because, like, if they have Megas the Moon, I think they definitely have uh, <coughs> Eldritch Evolution. I need a list, Drago. Um, I have to, like, change how I'm sideboarding here. Hang on one second. Hey.
Uh, so we have to like lean out. I'm gonna try leaning. I'm gonna try what the chat was talking about and try to get like a little leaner. Try to play these cards here. Try to play something like maybe board in some more Snapcasters. Board in some more stubborn dials. I probably could leave in like an engineer explosives or a grim lava mancer. I don't really want to board in Gurmag because they have Reflector Mage. Okay, um, we're just going to submit. Like, Humans is good. I think Green Red Tron is good. I don't think Jeskai is good. I think I don't think UW Control is good. I think Mardu Pyromancer is, like, medium because it plays Blood Moon. I think Burn's very good. I think Hollow One's very good. I think Ironworks is good. I think Affinity is good. Shadow Dredge, Storm, Jund is less good than Mono, than uh, than whatever it is. Even Bobo's, all right, Bobo's probably not. I don't really like Bobo's. Um, Blood Deck just gets you sometimes because if you stumble, they can turn for you. Yeah, I don't think Blue White and I don't think Jeskai are very good. I think Blue Moon is very good. I like that deck a lot. I would agree. Um, but we can just be aggressive here, which is nice. So we're going to bobble ourselves on one. <coughs> I think fair decks, like fair slow decks that play a lock piece, like Blood Moon or Ensnaring Bridge, are good. I think those decks are good. Um, so I can't quite get that into play, but I think I'm going to want it eventually. I think I'm going to have to like play more than one big creature. So we're just going to go like this. Let's see if we can do some addition. They have a Heary Jesus. One, two, three, four. What do they do with their scry here? Okay, uh, put one card in the bottom of their library. So they don't know if a land's coming. So I could just look to snap off a bird and a coiling oracle. That seems kind of greedy. But it also takes chump lockers out so my death shadows can get into these planeswalkers. So I'm going to take a bird. And then I'm going to look, take a coin article, and then maybe I'll hit a removal spell and just kind of like slow this game down a lot. <clears throat> so that's just my opinion. Like, you know, it is what it is. All right, we're, we're on the struggle. We're struggling now. I probably, maybe I should have mulligan my hand. I'm not sure. So they are going to hit their land in order to play. They can't place the Healy off of their mana, though. So I think I'm just going to take this Coiling Oracle. <coughs> Need a way to get... If I can get these into play next turn, I'm in good shape. If I don't, then I'm probably going to lose. I'm just saying that I don't think those decks can reliably get into I don't think you can rely. I don't think you can reliably get into a late game in modern with how diverse it is, without having a card that can fix your draws like brainstorm. Like I get what the cards do. Like I lose to blue white control on the regular. Like I understand where, what their places are. That's not bad. It's actually pretty. But I'm not going to be able to play Death Shadow. That's my next best draw probably, because now they're two lands off playing Sahili and Nahiri. Did I miss something, Teddy? Okay. Right. So we're just going to delve our whole graveyard because we could this easily could get Reflector Mage and we're not doing anything else. We're not delve our whole graveyard. We're going to pay full retail for this. I think, Drago, we're just going to have to agree to disagree. 
I don't really want any of these cards. I kind of just want to get my Death Shadows. Now that I have Battle Rage, I just kind of, all I want are Death Shadows. Like, I would take a land over either of these cards, which makes me think that I have to put these on the bottom. Because all I want to do is play, play two big boys next turn, especially with Battle Rage. <clears throat> Snapcaster's like Ds, right? I mean, it's like, is drawing Snapcaster Mage better or worse than having a chance to. Like, I'm not even going to bolt this thing. I'm literally just going to bolt myself and play two shadows. Well, that's probably greedy, right? Because like, now I can. Yeah. Because now I can battle rage for lethal next turn. Yeah, that was, that's greedy to do. So that is another Battle Rage, yes. Yep. If we get Reflector Maged here, I'm going to get punished for not hitting, for not bolting myself. So now we need to land off the top. That's pretty good as well. This is why we delved our, like, we paid full retail for our angler. I don't remember if we had any other interaction in our hand, but, you know, something like, I don't know, could cause a lot of issues for us, a reflector mage. So, <clears throat> yeah, I think I just want to be linear with that. I just want to, like, find a way to get my creatures into play to kill them, which was probably inconsistent. Like, if I'm going to bolt a noble hierarch, I probably should have uh, kept the snapcaster mage. If I'm going to bolt myself, then I should have bottomed the Snapcaster Mage. Because it's just not the game I'm looking to play. It, yes, Teddy. Like, I thought it was just a better play to have a chance to play two Shadows when I already have Thrown. Well, Rossum's off the deck. And Jim Davis, yes, Jim Davis does do well. So I will give you that. We're playing for the 5 0 here, which is pretty gas. Seven one two thousand eighteen. So, full color Sahili. Like I just, just my opinion is if you cannot put your head down and ignore your opponent and get free wins, then I don't, I just don't think, I don't think your deck is on a higher power level. But that's my opinion. It's, it's my stream. I'm allowed to have my opinions on the stream. 38 viewers, I appreciate y'all for hanging out here. I'm probably going to call it after this one. I need three more matches to finish up my goal, but I, I don't really want to stream three more matches tonight. It's already 11.30 and I have to take my dog out. So we're going to call it after this one here. <coughs> okay. Look at that. Look at that emo. What a guy. The cutest dog on Twitch right there. Like, and also, Drago, most likely those players are going to pick up any deck they want and do decent with it. Um, I'm going to keep my hand. I don't have a blue source, but I have two free cantrips and I can still interact on one. And like one, two, three, like I'm, I'm reasonably close to an angler. No, I'm actually, hang on. I shouldn't turn off my, because they discard spell me, I'm likely going to. Um, I'm likely going to cycle my street race. Against an island, I'm going to definitely cycle my street race on one. 
because I likely need a discard spell or a blue source here. Basic Island Pass makes me think Storm. <coughs> I would cycle Wraith in this in a face of discard here. I would rather cycle my Wraith than have it be Thought Seeds because it enacts both of my game plans, right? It just having it two damage is better for me the later the game goes. Right? There's some hands I don't do that. I should do this now. Because they don't appear to be discard though. So they're ops. So I'm gonna put my opponent on storm. I just saw op. They're either, they're either playing storm or blue moon, I think. Okay, we drew another one of those, which is good. Okay, so we're playing against, I think, Blue Moon, like a, a weird version. Okay. So we have a lot of Street Wraiths. I should have cycled my Street Wraith last turn. I was just, like, not paying attention here. Okay, so I might as well mine my life total a little bit just until I figure out exactly what's going on here. Okay, so this is a pretty easy thing because I don't have an answer for that. I don't really have an answer to the Blood Moon, but I would be willing to bet that I can get this Gurmag Angler down enough time to play around the moon. They have Cryptic Command, though, so it is going to be a little difficult, but like more than likely next turn, the Angler is going to be online. Yeah, so we're just going to let this go. We have bigger fish to fry. I agree with Mr. Jones. Um, so I don't really want to do that. One, two, three, four, five, seven, leave up, steam vents. So my opponent missed a land drop, which is worth noticing. But we're just going to... This is the kind of hand where we could be in trouble if we don't have a Death Shadow. Because we don't, like, we're going to a fairly low life total against an opponent with reach. We don't have a way to punish them for reaching. God, my opponent is just drawing the absolute stones here. I'm not going to Thought Scour at the end of their turn because they likely have a card that can remand, and I'm not going to let them use their remand to cycle through cards. That's pretty good. Hey, say nothing. How are you doing? Yeah, magic is like, even though I do agree that Teddy has some good points, magic is not cut and dry for sure. There are sometimes that I think it's worth cycling my street wraith because I think as the game goes longer, it's worth having two, it's worth being down two damage. Okay, so we're just, again, we're just going to sit tight. Not going to give my opponent <coughs> the opportunity to use their mana. Again, I don't really want to cast this looting either. I think I would rather just like that, just, like if my opponent's not doing anything, then they obviously have cards like Remand in their deck, I think. So I might as well just hang out here. They have one more opt, and they haven't used it yet, which I found odd. It's difficult over the internet sometimes, you know? But, like, I think I think Teddy has some good points here with Death Shadow, like, and he's done some things that have helped me out, but I think that 
sometimes, Teddy, I think you speak in a little too absolute, in my opinion. Yep, we get to clean up, we get to Blood Moon. So that's almost worth casting. And if my opponent were, if I felt like I needed to force the issue, I would cast that. But I, I really don't think I have to. Because I don't think there's anything like, or even if anything, I don't know what could resolve it's really that bad. Snapcaster Mage. Okay. I kind of want to bolt this when they can't remand it. I think I'm just going to bolt this right now. Yeah. It just makes all of their cards so much worse when they don't have a way to block the Zangler. <coughs> I'd likely have another Snapcaster Mage coming. Alright, that was a pretty good draw for the home team. They target Serum Visions, which is probably just a misclick, but... This is a spell snare. My opponent gets another turn and can potentially, like, draw a land and cryptic bounce my angler, but they didn't have it. It's kind of an unfortunate draw for my opponent. <clears throat> okay, so we want the counter magic. I want Colagon's command. Maybe, probably not, actually. Because they don't actually like kill my creatures. They just, they have such a difficult time like actually dealing with creatures. If I want a card like Engineer Explosives might be good. I, I do like boarding out some number of Street Wraiths against these decks. And Lightning Bolt is not great. Battle Rage is also like kind of medium. Um, usually don't like Battle Rage against control decks, but they don't have really good removal. So I could do something. I think I want to do something like this. There's no sense in like K Command's pretty medium. I like having answers to fate to what's his name to a thing in the ice. I probably call it cut one battle rage for another lightning bolt just to make sure Pyromancer doesn't get out of control. We'll go, we'll go like this because I can still like cryptic bounce from my creature if I go to battle. Oh, if they're playing Pyromancer, then I should have battle rage. No, 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 no. No. Oh, I literally just like talked myself into the right thing as soon as I was. Ugh. Yeah, and I understand that, Teddy. That makes sense. Like, I get that. I think I would rather make sure I'm down two damage for a long game. I should have boarded in my. This hand's too reactive. I don't really like this hand. It's like lands and spells, and it's a fair matchup. So I'm, I'm going to keep it. I'm not certainly not in love with this, but we can play magic. Yeah, guys, let's just all take it easy here. I think I think we can all just take it easy. So I'm going to Serum Visions no matter what this turn. So just take it easy, guys. Come on. Take it easy, everybody. 
Ooh, we're gonna get this counter spell? What are we doing? No. Turn off auto yields. So I kind of want an angler. But I kind of want a discard spell more than I want an angler. I'm just gonna get absolutely destroyed by a blood moon. I'm just gonna walk into a blood moon on turn three. It's gonna feel like such shit. But I can't keep this island. This island's so bad. Because I need the swamp in order to do anything. I'm gonna go like this. I'm probably I should have mulliganed. I should have mulliganed my hand. This just doesn't do enough here. It just does not do enough. <clears throat> This can be. Why don't everybody just take it easy here? Yeah, take it easy, Drago. Everybody just needs to get along. So they played an island instead of the mountain, which is a big play move from our opponent. Okay, so there's Nasty, Inquisition. So I'm going to start off by this, because I'm okay if my opponent remands this. I would like to land my Inquisition. All right, so they didn't do that. I'm just going to put both of these on the bottom. And now we're going to cross our fingers that our opponent didn't big brain us and save this for a discard spell. I guess you did ask for it. All right, we're about to get Blood Mooned. <clears throat> she still has an. Okay, we're not going to get Mooned. Sweet. All right. Okay, that's pretty good. So I'm going to cast this first because I can easily get rid of one of his engineer explosives. And I probably can get rid of another looting because we want to play a longer game. I don't want to go down another card. So I'm going to play this, shock myself. Probably play this angler right into a Jace and then just absolutely throw up. I kind of want to ditch one of these lootings because I would like to be able to Snapcaster back as Searing Visions. I should have thought about that. I should have ditched like a blood moon. Oh, well, I guess the bolt's good against Jace. Yeah, we'll go like this. We'll keep the lootings. We win this. We've gone 9-1 and today, we'll stream in, which is pretty gas. Okay, we'll take oh, it's Snapcaster, so this is a pretty good exchange for my opponent. I'm going to snap visions. I guess I could have flashback looting also, but I don't know. All right, that's pretty good. So we're going to put this on the bottom, and we're going to put this on top. And then we're going to clear a path for the old, uh, the old shadow man starting next turn. So against three cards and a decent amount of reach and having thoughts to myself twice, I'm just going to trade this off here. There's no sense in going down too, too low here because I just don't want to get bolted at it. Like, I think against decks like this, I think oftentimes Death Shadow has some inevitability because they struggle to kill your creatures so much if you don't get burnt out. You have to, like, walk the tightrope. Both of your main threats are inherently flawed in this matchup. If this is getting countered, that's great. Snap logic knot, okay. So that's not super great as it um <coughs> it just makes it so my shadows only a 2-2, two -two, which makes me want to take the damage a little more. They're gonna bolt me. So this is what we're talking about. They're just turning up the heat. 
All right. This is where you, this is like, this is the tough part. Oh, shoot, shoot. They targeted Logic Knot. I thought they targeted Lightning Bolt. I was looking over here, and I assumed there was a bolt in their graveyard they targeted. Yep. All right, well, let's get rid of this. We just messed that all up. And that'll happen sometimes when you're, like, streaming and moving back and forth here. You'll just, like, I got bolted in my face. I figured they were lightning bolting me. I figured they were flashing back like a bolt. That looks pretty good. Oh, now we're going to lose this game. Yeah, now we're definitely, now we're probably going to lose after my mistakes there. All right, we're gonna thought see we're gonna hit this because it's coming off of a sleight of hand, and it's more than likely a pretty decent card. It's a nibble instructionist. Okay, <coughs> I was paying attention and thought the same. Nibble instructionist. So they are a fetch land sniper from way back. I was just I just didn't want it to be like a Jace, you know. So it's whoever hits first, really, is going to win. So we have that covered. I probably just want to get this into play now, as it's just going to like insulate me. X is 2, OK. Yes, way back, Rant. I was I was making a reference to like Stifle, because that's what that's what they're doing. That's what I when I meant like way back, like it's an effect from way back. My opponent is tripping. Can tripping. Bottom top. Plays blue delta. All right, we're not going to get cute with this thing in the ice. I'm just going to pop this right now, I think. I don't want to have two of my mana tied up against a card where they put on, they put a card on top. I, I'm going to get punished if it's like a, if it's something like a, whatever it is. Oh, uh, gosh, I can't even think. If it's something like a, another thing in the ice, then I get punished. I'm a little tired. All right. Okay, so I'm gonna assume the card they left on top is like Snapcaster Mage or a Counter Spell after they're not doing anything. So let's take a look. Because if it's like a Logic Knot, then I want to hit this. It's a Bolt. All right. Bolt makes sense as well. So now, if I find a Death Shadow, I probably just win, like win on the spot. I don't actually win on the spot, but like it puts me wicked far ahead here. One of my favorite decks. I'm glad it's adapting. I just can't get on this bobble and little trade though. You know, it's worth trying out. That's a good Serum Visions. I don't understand when these decks cut Serum Visions. I think you lose like such a degree of like. You lose so much um, consistency without Serum Visions. Okay, that's pretty good. So we just have to like, I mean, they're gonna be in the abyss, sorry, next turn, so. <coughs> then my Death Shadow does just block the Awaken Horror, Woken Horror. I'm just gonna stub this, Snapcaster. Okay, stub your bolts. Probably shouldn't let that one resolve. Oh, well, I meant the, like the Snapcaster Mage Grant would fog me a turn more than likely. So I think my opponent's going to chump block with their thing and look to attack with this.
No, what are they gonna do? Yeah. So actually I probably should upkeep snap bolt this. How many bolts have they gone through? They've gone through one, two, three. Yeah, I'm just gonna snap bolt this on their upkeep. I probably should have done this before then. We're just gonna hope that they miss here. <clears throat> yeah, I when I when I started learning how to like properly use serum visions with Street Wraith and especially Mistress Bobble, I liked it a lot better. All right. Jace bounces shadow, or are you going to brainstorm for the last bowl? There seems to be a right play here. Yep. And that is it. As sad as it is. Attack Jace. Oh, I'm, gonna have to, I'm glad it's good. I'm finishing up here because, like, Moto is starting to tweak out. Get it down here. This seems like a concession pause. It gets five oh, yeah. Nice. Way to go. 